This is something that is left from a PC, and these parts were almost forgotten. A while ago I picked up this PC case with some parts, like the motherboard with the CPU, cooling fan, CD-ROM, one hard disk and card reader. The motherboard is Gigabyte 1155 socket, and it's coming with Intel i5-2500K CPU. So back in time, this was a pro motherboard with a decent CPU. But this motherboard comes with an unusual problem, that I found it later. Before I start with anything, I want to test these components that I got. I pulled some of the missing parts from my stash, and I start with building this computer. I add a thermal paste, and I put back the cooling fan. Then I put a new CMOS or BIOS battery. The old one is gone. I add some RAM as well, just enough to start the PC. Then I add a graphic card that I use for testing and the power supply as the final part. I try to start the computer, and at first the computer started, then went off, then again started, then went off again, but after a while I heard one beep sound, which means everything was ok. Then I pull a new SSD. I mount the SSD and I start with making more tests. I mean, I start with checking the CMOS or the BIOS first, and making some changes as well. And then I move to installing Windows. As Windows I go with Windows 10. Later I found that this PC has a Windows 7 license, so I use the same license key to activate the Windows 10. I cross over longer and deeper testing, and at first I didn't find any problem. But later I found something. Sometimes when I press restart or shut down, the blue screen appears. Not always and not often. And after that, the PC will hardly turn on. Which is very strange and unusual problem. Well, now let's move to disassembly, cleaning and fixing this computer. The PC case and the motherboard are pretty dirty, but also notice that the dirt is sticky. The stickness assumes that this computer was out of use for pretty long, and probably spent a lot of time in a bad conditions. The PC case was released back in 2011, and the motherboard with the CPU are from that era too. While disassembling, I found that the PC case was damaged to some points, but nothing serious. In general, some parts are looking very promising, but some are not really. After I finished with this assembly, I had to clean the dirt that fell out from the case and prepare the work surface for the next steps. The motherboard is very dirty and sticky as well, and I knew this was going to be a pretty long and interesting process to clean anything. When I took out the CPU cooling fan, I saw that something was wrong around the CPU and the CPU socket. There is too much thermal paste around. But using cotton buds, hydropropyl alcohol and brushes, successfully I cleaned the crucial points. When I took out the CPU, at first I didn't notice anything, but later I found that some of the socket pins were a little out of place. The difference here is so small that only under different light angles can be barely spotted. Anyway, later I'm going to fix all of that. But first, I have to do a lot of cleaning. First, I cleaned the CPU from all sides around, and even I found all thermal paste on the bottom side of the CPU. But it's all ok, this is nothing to worry about. The i5-2500K is an 1155 socket Sandy Bridge CPU, or the second generation of Intel Core series. The CPU is pretty old nowadays. It was released back in January 2011, but still this processor is not bad at all. After I finished with the CPU, I moved to the motherboard. The motherboard is a real mess, so first I start with removing the dry dust and dirt as much as possible, and then I move to wash the motherboard using 96% isopropyl alcohol, cotton buds and brushes. And a few words about this motherboard. This is a Gigabyte Z68A, 
D3H B3 motherboard. Back in the days, these motherboards were one of the best on the market. This motherboard supports many CPUs, I mean starting from the base ones and up to Intel i7. Also this motherboard supports Nvidia SLI and AMD Crossfire, which means two graphic cards at once can be used and boost the performance. Also this is a DDR3 motherboard and the maximum support up to 32GB of RAM. So back in time this was a very decent motherboard. And I had to rewash the motherboard a couple of times until everything was fully clean. To fix the CPU socket pins I used a very thin tweezers, almost needle-like. If the pins are just curved or pushed down, that can be fixed. But if the pins are broken and missing, then the whole socket needs to be changed. It's not impossible, just it's a very difficult process. In this case, a few pins were pushed down and the pins were lower than the others. So probably one has lost a full contact and caused problems with starting up or blue screen while shutdown or restarting. After I finished with the socket pins, I put back the CMOS battery and I moved to clean the socket lock and the metal bracket. To clean the boat I used mixture of degrass and isopropyl alcohol. Degrass is for cleaning greasy or oily parts, surfaces or anything else. I mean this product is mostly used to clean the kitchen, but it's going to be great for some other things as well. Also, after cleaning I wash these parts using warm water and dish soap. And at the end everything is shiny. It's look like it just come out out of the store. And this is the motherboard after detailed cleaning. Also this cleaning process is a little longer. I need a couple of hours to clean the motherboard. Then I need to dry the motherboard and then clean it again and then dry again for the final time. But in the end it's all worth it. The motherboard is looking like a new one. After I finish with the motherboard I move to clean the CPU cooling fan. The fan blades I wash it using isopropyl alcohol and brushes. I had to wash this cooling fan as well because of sticky dirt. And the heat sink, I wash it using degrass, dish soap and warm water. The final result is great and the cooling is like a new one. Now I apply a thermal paste over the CPU and I mount the cooling. Now I took the back case fan. The case fan is pretty dirty as well. Here I separate the fan blades from the electronics. The fan blades I wash it using a mixture of degrass and alcohol and then I wash the blades using a warm water. The part with the electronics carefully I wash it using isopropyl alcohol only. After washing I put a little oil to loop the cooling fan. Before this the cooling fan was a little bit loud but now everything is much better and the fan is spinning smoothly. The other cables and electronics I clean it to a very similar way. I mean the plastics I wash it using soap and water and the electronics I clean it using isopropyl alcohol. I mean to the card reader and the front electronics with a power button and the USB and audio ports. The case I clean it using the same stuff, but first I wash the case using the shower and warm water. Then I apply a degrass to a whole case and then I wash the case again. And the PC case from a dirty and yellowish turns to like a new one. Also the cleaning stuff is very cheap. This is nothing expensive to do. The isopropyl alcohol is pretty cheap and the degrass is even cheaper. Just it needs some time and careful work. Now when everything is finished I move to assemble the computer. Here I will go with some stuff that I already have. A well known Shaftec power supply and a GTX 690 GPU. The GTX 690 is a dual GPU, so technically we are gonna have SLI here. The power supply will be used later on this computer, so I've tried to do some small cable management. These computer cases are great, but in general there is no one out space for some great cable management. I mean compared with the computer cases from today. The owner of this PC told me that he will do a different combination, like 16GB of RAM 
and 4 gigs NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti, which is a much better combination from the current one. For now, I built this computer with the parts that are from or around the same era. Actually, I wanna see and show how 10 plus years all computer components will perform today. And I'm done with assembly. And this is the final result. And a few words about this computer. The PC case, the motherboard and the other parts now are perfectly clean. And everything is working perfectly fine. The drivers are still available for the motherboard. I'm not sure about Windows 11, but I think this PC could do that. The drivers for the Nvidia GTX 690 are a little bit outdated. The last driver update is from June 2023, which at this moment that is not really bad at all. Also, the blue screen is gone now, and the computer is working just fine. So, the problem with the blue screen has coming from the socket pins. Some of the pins maybe have not good contact with the CPU, and cause this problem. The performance on this PC are not bad at all. The computer is pretty fast and running smoothly. This computer is great for most daily tasks like browsing the web, watching videos and movies, even the 4K is playable. I think this PC can edit photos and videos using Adobe. I know, it's not gonna be fast, but it's possible. The gaming performance are pretty good as well. I've tried to play some games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Crisis. In Odyssey I used 2560 x1080 resolution and mostly low settings. And the game is running with about a 30 FPS. The Assassin's Creed Odyssey is a pretty demanding game, even for the far better hardware. So I'm a little surprised here. The other game that I play is Crisis 3. The Crisis 3 is a very demanding game as well. When the Crisis was released, it was rare to see some PC to run this game at the max. This game also supports SLI. So here the whole graphic card is active. I go with almost all max settings. And here under the settings the frame rate was about 30 to 40. So basically this computer is capable of playing most of the older games and some of the newer games. When I look at the PC case, the red cooling fan, the blue motherboard and the green GeForce, it's giving me an early 2010 vibes. Also this took me back when the gaming industry was skyrocketing. A time when you could find a ton of different computer components. I mean different motherboards, graphic cards and more. And a time when the desktop computers were fun. Well, and this is all about this old machine. And I'm very glad because I back in function and I clean it this computer. This is old machine, but still capable of doing many things and not yet to be forgotten. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I hope this video will give ideas and inspiration to save some stuff and give it a new life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.